Hey everyone, welcome back to another race car building video. Today we're going to be building a Formula 1000 race car front wing using a moldless construction technique. We start by printing out the airfoil shapes onto sticky paper, cutting them out and gluing them onto aluminum and then cutting out the aluminum to match. We then stick the aluminum onto both sides of a block of styrofoam and cut it out using a homemade hot wire cutter. The hot wire cutter is based on the G string from a guitar, not a girl, and is held in a tree saw frame and it's powered by a battery charger for a car. With the battery charger I can control the current and voltage and get the right cutting speed and temperature. It's important to make sure that you cut equally at both sides, keep the, the wire perfectly perpendicular to the profiles. When you're finished, we take the weights off the top. Those are necessary to uh, make it cut properly. And you see the top then just pops right off. And the airfoil, finished airfoil, just pops right out of the base. And we save both those bottom and top pieces to support the airfoil profile while we do the epoxy fiberglass coating. So I put on my spacesuit and wet out the, fiber, the, the, the styrofoam core with epoxy and then add a layer of fiberglass cloth to the top and like I said it's supported in the uh, cutaway block of styrofoam which fits it perfectly. We needed to make three of these airfoil sections all together. This is the second one and I ran out of epoxy in the middle so I had to mix up some epoxy and then continue. We get it worked in there and then add the second layer of cloth. You can see that I'm only doing one side at a time. The extra cloth is rolled up at the front there. In a minute we're going to flip it over and uh, apply the cloth to the bottom of the airfoil. First we start by stretching it nice and straight and taut so we don't get any bunches at the front of the airfoil especially. Then laminate both of those layers of fiberglass cloth to the foam. Put it back inside the foam blocks inside the piece of garbage bag and let it cure overnight under some weights. Then we start working on the mounting points. This is aluminum uh, front brackets that are going to be laminated right inside the wing. And then notice that, that attaches to two other pieces of aluminum which here are being cut out and then are being bent in the hydraulic press. These two pieces screw directly into hard mounting points in the nose. And everything has to be arranged in 3D properly and straight, which took quite a bit of work. Once it's correct, then we trim the airfoil sections and glue them together on both sides of the aluminum pieces. Make sure it's all straight, let it cure in the sun for a while, and then it's time to laminate the full outer skin of the wing. So we start by cutting several layers of cloth here. I think I did, well, I forget how many, I did several layers. Um, and each layer is a little bit bigger than the one below it so that we end up getting a nice smooth uh, taper to the wing from the, the root outwards. And this is a, something you don't often see. There's a really a, a large amount of time just spent thinking and measuring and cutting and fitting all this stuff before we even start doing a lamination. Once again, why these race car pieces are so expensive. Sometimes in order to get a straight line I will pull out a thread from where I want to cut and I can see that a black line which I cut along. Each piece is rolled up and stacked in order in the order that I'm going to lay it uh, onto the wing. So now it's time to don my spacesuit and do the lamination. We start with the top surface right around the joints 
with the aluminum inside and we lay on a patch to both the left and the right ones and then wet that out and then lay another piece on top of that which goes all the way across get that all wetted out make sure that it fits nicely around the aluminum brackets there Now we lay some stiffening or strengthening pieces right around, uh, around that joint there between the aluminum and the fiberglass. And then we lay up kind of an external spar on the top surface of the airfoil, which goes through a slot that you see in each one of those brackets. It's about four inches wide, and we fill it up with several layers of fiberglass cloth, each one about 10 centimeters longer than the one below it until they get to the outside tip of the wing. And that way we get a, a skin of varying thickness where it matches the distribution of stress in the, in the wing. Stress that would be created by downforce on the wing or by hitting a curb with the outside corner. And we lay up a couple pieces of stiffener right there at the front and then we do the whole leading edge one long piece across the leading edge in the end I think I did two pieces across the leading edge uh, which are not shown here uh, turn the wing over and glue the bottom piece down and then wet it out around the jack wing points the whole car will be lifted by this wing there's a couple of places where the aluminum sticks through the fiberglass so that we can pick it up with jack. So there's a slot cut into these two pieces of cloth before we lay them up. Now, not all the layers are shown here. And then I use a little bit of ply to make the cloth lay down flat and now it's time to lay up the front wing end planes. We start with a piece of plastic honeycomb that's cut to shape and lay uh, one layer of fiberglass cloth onto both sides of it, wet it out with epoxy, remove all the excess epoxy and then use two inch wide fiberglass cloth tape and run that all the way around the perimeter of the uh, of the each end plate. Stick that down. It doesn't really want to go around the corner very much, so this is one place where it's an advantage that we have this very sticky, thick epoxy resin that comes from around here, because it's thick enough to hold this in place for the few minutes necessary before I can get the vacuum bag down on it. So here I've turned the end plate over and I'm sticking the uh, cloth tape around the other side. And then I don't show doing the second end plate because it's just the same as doing the first end plate. And so snap our fingers and there it is. And now we use a garbage bag and I use double-sided sticky tape all the way around the outside. And as you can see, as soon as I turn on the pump, we get an instant vacuum. And it is held down nice and tightly. So tightly, in fact, that you can see the outline of the tape around the outside of the end plates. And you can see every imperfection and even see the uh, honeycomb pattern. So we let it cure overnight. Next morning, dust off the flowers and leaves that landed on it and peel off the plastic. It comes off very easily as you can see. Didn't use any peel ply or any breather cloth in this case. This technique work, works just fine. Next we take the stainless steel springy spatula and cut all the way around the edges.
and it pops right off. Nice and light. Cured pretty well. And nice and stiff. So now it's time to sand down the roughness of the fiberglass. Remember there are many layers of fiberglass on here at this point. I'm using a air-powered double-action sander, which turned out to be not the best way to do it. Later I found an electric-powered double-action sander, which works much better and much faster than this. In fact, I have to turn it down from full power sometimes. So once you get it uh, uh, sanded down, now we're going to lay up some end panels, which will glue onto the outside of the wing. And these are essentially a thing that we're going to uh, screw the end plates onto. So this remains permanently attached to the wing, but where the end plates can be removed and replaced if they get damaged, or you can move them up and down as you decide to move the wing up and down or change the, the wing angle of attack. Now you can count the layers here, but I think I did about seven layers. Wetting them out with epoxy as we go. The idea is to form a panel about a sixteenth of an inch thick, or 1.6 millimeters. Then we wet the surface of the end of the wing with epoxy and put it right on there. Prop it up with a can. Now we're going to take some of that two inch wide fiberglass cloth tape and lay that into the corner there. Same on the other side. And we're going to uh, wet that out with epoxy and then let it cure. There's the finished view of it before curing, but uh, after laying it up. Now the next day, we take our trusty spatula and pry around the edges. Add a little bit of work. I'm going to test it here. Not quite ready to come off yet, but we give it a little more prying and you hear that crunch? And pop, pops right off. And that's what it looks like underneath there. Now we've mixed up a mixture of epoxy and micro balloons to make putty. And we're going to fill in the surface. <laughs> Big girl decides to hit me up some cash right there in the middle of the video and the, the puttying. Say hi to Pit Girl. And then we continue with spreading the epoxy micro balloon putty. End up doing several layers of putty and primer and sanding and stuff to get a, a good profile to the top surface of the wing so that that thickened skin doesn't show in the, even in the reflection. Now we're going to putty in the surfaces of the front wing end plates. Now we just work that, that putty into the gaps there. You can spin up 15 times, it's a lot of work. So I'm not going to show you the rest of the uh, puttying and sanding and so on process, but here's the front wing ready for priming. Here it is primed and then sanded and primed again. Went through that a couple times and then here's the final top coat of epoxy. And now it's on the car and we can lift the car by the front wing as you see here. Raising and lowering it. 
have it mounted the end plates because we're going to do that once we pick the final ride height of the car. And there you have it. Please subscribe and like the video. Hope you enjoyed it.